The real question is, how do you know you have a brain tumor? That's a good question, actually. Most people would say, well, I had headaches. Well, it's very unusual, not impossible, but it's not usual for brain tumor patients to present with headaches. The only time they do is if the tumor bleeds into itself, causing a sudden increase of the volume of the tumor within the head, or if there's a lot of swelling around the tumor, or if the tumor obstructs the spinal fluid drainage system, causing a buildup of fluid or hydrocephalus. So those are the situations in which people with brain tumors really present with headache. And the headaches are unique because they usually occur at night while you're sleeping, when you're lying down. That's when the pressure really begins at night, so the people will report that the headache actually awakens them from sleep. The headache is usually associated with nausea and vomiting, sometimes double vision. Uh, and so these headaches are not your typical, oh, my pain in the back of the head, I get it every day, and it's worse, you know, so on and so on. It's, it's a real specific type of headache that you get with brain tumors. Other tumors have no presenting symptoms whatsoever. And these are the ones that I consider to be pretty interesting because they bring up a real dilemma, an ethical dilemma and a medical dilemma. How do you treat a tumor which was not found because you were looking for a tumor? It was found because you had a, a scan because you hit your head. You had a concussion. You were in an automobile accident. Or perhaps uh, you got a scan because you have a movement disorder like Parkinson's disease, or you got a scan for some other unrelated reason. You have breast cancer and you heard that sometimes breast cancer goes to the brain, so you talk to your doctor into doing a brain scan and indeed there's your brain tumor. Uh, these are called incidentally discovered tumors. And then, of course, you have to figure out, okay, now what kind of tumor is it? Where is it? What can I do about it? Does it, does it have to be treated or can it be watched? And many of these incidentally found tumors don't really need to be treated. They need to be watched. And if there's growth, then they need to be treated. But if there's no growth, then the same way as they were there before, they can stay there forever. And it's that type of tumor that I think is really interesting because it, it uh, forces you to really be logical about uh, the, the decision-making process as opposed to the knee-jerk reaction. It's a big malignant tumor. It's got to be treated. These tumors are not usually big, they're not usually malignant, and they may or may not need to be treated. And then the rest of the tumors either present with seizures, and there are all different kinds of seizures depending on where the tumor is. There can be visual seizures if the tumor is in the back of the head. There can be motor seizures if the tumor is in the side of the head. There can be speech type seizures if the tumor is in the dominant hemisphere in the speech area etc etc and then there are all variety of what they call complex partial seizures if it's in the temporal lobe and these have all sorts of bizarre manifestations some people will present with abdominal pain it's called abdominal epilepsy so people with abdominal pain might not have an ulcer they might have a brain tumor um, it can present with the petit mal type of epilepsy where you just kind of stare into space for a few seconds and recover your activities and so on and so on. And finally, seizures can present with a real, honest to God, neurological deficit. Numbness of one side of the body, paralysis of one side of the body, loss of vision in one visual field, double vision, a variety of different symptoms like that. So to recap, tumors present with no symptoms, that is incidental, neurological deficits, seizures, and headaches caused by increased intracranial pressure, increased pressure within the head.